Alright, alright, welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute EKG. I am the Whiteboard Doctor, and today we're going to be talking about a very thrilling topic known as Diagnosis of Left Ventricular Hypertrophy on 12 Lead EKG. So, there's a number of different uh, standardized criteria that one can use to diagnose LVH. Oftentimes, providers just look at lead, you know, lateral leads, v, uh, V5, V6, or AVL and say, nah, uh, the R wave or S waves look big, it's probably LVH. But there is formal standard criteria, and they should be used when diagnosing LVH. Um, the first criteria that can be used is called the Cornell criteria. And then there's actually a modified Cornell criteria that's shorter to use. Uh, the Cornell criteria looks at the R wave in AVL plus the S wave in V3. The modified Cornell just looks at the R wave in AVL and does not look at the S wave in V3. The second criteria is called the Sokolow Lion criteria. Could have pronounced it wrong, probably did, but here we are. Sokolow Lion criteria. And this looks at the S wave in V1 plus the R wave in V5 or V6. There's a third criteria. Um, it is called the Romhilt Estes. I guess I'll write it Romhilt Estes. LVH point score, but it is extremely long, and I don't know anyone that uses it. It's like uh, composed of like nine different findings that you have to all add up. It's more for academic purposes than real kind of in clinical scenarios. So let's start with the Cornell criteria. The Cornell criteria, as we have written out, looks at AVL, which I'll circle here, and it looks at the R wave, right? So we have the Q wave, negative deflection, then we have this R wave positive deflection, and I want you to count the number of boxes that the R wave is composed of vertically or the amplitude. So it'd be from here to here, and we have about one big box, two big box, three big box, then probably about four small squares, and then at the top one small square. So we'll say that's another big box, so it's four big boxes. Um, each big box is composed of five small boxes, so that's going to be 20 small boxes or 20 millimeters because every small box is a millimeter. The other part of the Cornell criteria is that we look at the S wave in V3. So going down to V3, hello V3, um, we have no Q wave, then we have a positive deflection, which would be the R wave, then we have the negative deflection, which is the S wave. So again, we're going to look at the amplitude or the vertical direction of this. We're going to count the number of boxes. Um, so it looks like at top here, we probably have three small boxes, two big boxes, then two small boxes. So we're going to say three big boxes total, which equals 15 millimeters of boxes. It then wants us to add these together. So if we add up 20 millimeters, actually, let's do that not in that area because we're going to need that area so we'll do it down here so we'll do 20 millimeters plus 15 millimeters equals 35. for the cornell criteria you need greater than 28 millimeters in males and greater than 20 millimeters in females this ekg was taken from an elderly female um, but nonetheless it satisfies both male and female criteria so that is cornell for the modified cornell I'll draw a line below it. Modified Cornell, um, all you need is greater than 12 millimeters with that R wave in AVL. And we have that, right, because it's 20 millimeters. So this is modified Cornell. Okay, the third way we can calculate whether there's LVH is actually the, or the second way is the Sokolow Lion criteria. Um, this looks at the S wave in V1 and R wave in V5 or V6. So we'll come up here and let me just tell you ahead of time, this EKG does not meet for the Sokolow Lion criteria, which I think is an important um, example, right? Because depending on the criteria you use, will drive whether there's LVH. So if we look at the S wave in V1, right? So no Q wave, R waves positive deflection, S waves negative deflection. It looks like it's about uh, two big boxes, three small boxes, which is going to be about 13 millimeters. And then V6, it wants us to look at the R wave. So 
no Q wave, R wave is for positive deflection, and it looks like the R wave is about five small boxes. So if we add these up, 13 plus 5, we get 18. And for the Sokolo line criteria, we need the sum of these to be greater than 35. So greater than 35 millimeters for the Sokolo line criteria. And we'll circle these here. So this EKG meets using the Cornell and the modified Cornell criteria, but not the Sokolo line criteria. Um, I do just want to go down to another EKG. This EKG, and you'll have to take my word for it, actually does not meet using the Cornell and the modified Cornell criteria. We can just look at it quick, right? So Cornell and modified Cornell, we look at AVL and then V3. And you can see here that the R wave in AVL, which is this wave, is quite small. And then the S wave in V3 is also not large, right? Because we needed it greater than 20 because she's a female or greater than 12 for the modified and it does not meet for either of those. But if we use the Sokolo line criteria, which looks at the S wave in V1, so right, R would be this positive flexion, here's the S wave, and it looks to be about two big boxes and a couple small boxes, so it's about 12 millimeters. And then the Sokolo line criteria also looks at the R wave in V5 or V6. We'll just go to V5 here, and it's hard to see because there's this overlap at the top. It looks to be one, two, three, four, We'll just say five big boxes just for the sake of simplicity, even though it's probably a little bit less. And the Sokolo line criteria says you have to add these together and they have to be greater than 35. 12 plus 25 obviously equals 37 millimeters, which satisfies the greater than 35 millimeter criteria for Sokolo line. So there is LVH for the Sokolo line criteria. So this is just an example of how different EKGs can give you different findings and the criteria you use uh, might be driven based on the lie of the heart, whether you would meet LVH criteria. So think about all your criteria. Um, you can also have kind of moderate LVH or findings uh, to demonstrate possible LVH. Um, so these are all different ways to think about it, but um, in reality, if you meet with either the Cornell Modified Cornell or Sokolo line criteria, if you meet with any three of those, um, you can say the patient does have LVH. So even though the Cornell is negative or the Sokolo line is positive for LVH, the patient still has LVH, such as in this case. All right, so that was a five-minute EKG session on left ventricular hypertrophy. Any questions, please put them in the comments. Feel free to subscribe if you want more uh, videos on EKGs or comprehensive overviews or clinical cases. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.